beheld an eerie sight For my monster from his slab began to rise And suddenly, to my surprise He did the match He did the monster match The monster match It was a graveyard smash He did the match It caught on in a flash He did the match He did the monster match From my laboratory in the castle east to the master bedroom where the vampires feast The ghouls all came from their humble abode To get a jolt from my electro They did the mash They did the monster mash The monster mash It was a graveyard smash They did the mash It caught on in a flag They did the mash They did the monster mash The zombies were having fun The party had just begun the guests included Wolfman, Dracula, and his son. The scene was rocking, all were digging the sounds. Igor on chains, backed by his baying hounds. The coffin bangers were about to arrive with their vocal group, the Crypt Kicker Five. They played the match. They played the monster match. The monster match. It was a graveyard smash. They played the match. It got on in a flash. They played the mash. They played the monster mash. Out from his coffin, Rack's voice did ring. Seemed he was troubled by just one thing. Opened the lid and shook his fist and said, Whatever happened to my Transylvania twist? It's now the mash. It's now the monster mash. The monster mash. And it's a graveyard smash. It's now the mash. It's caught on in a flash. It's now the mash. It's now the monster mash. Now everything's cool, Drax a part of the band. And my monster mash is the hit of the land. For you, the living, this mash was meant to. When you get to my door, tell them what is sent. Then you can mash. Then you can monster mash. The monster mash. And do my graveyard smash. Then you can mash. You'll catch on in a flash. Then you can mash. Then you can monster mash. <laughs> mash. Ooh. Is he good? You impress me, young boy. Mash good. Monster mash. Monster mash. Monster mash.
Hello everyone, my name is Bailey Grady. I live in Hendersonville, Tennessee, and I am your facilitator for the evening. I have been a member of Silk and Saunders since March of 2020, and I joined the facilitator team a little over six months ago. After hitting a breaking point with my anxiety, I started my journey with Silk and Saunders, hoping it would help me better manage my mental health. So many months later, and I'm happy to report that Silk and Sonder has done that for me and so much more. I truly don't know how I would have navigated 2020 without it, y'all. If you're new to this community, welcome. In addition to these beautiful journals each month, you have also gained an extended community full of some of the most genuine and supportive people around. And if you're a long-term Sonder or like me, welcome back. I already see some familiar names in the chat and popping up on the screen. You already know just how special these journals are and all the magic that is hidden within our community. So tonight we're going to be putting pen to paper and getting these November journals ready for the month with a little bit of a spooky theme as this is our costume edition. So before we get started, make sure that you do have that November edition. If it hasn't come yet, that's okay. Just grab any notebook or a few pieces of paper to take notes on and you can always transfer your thoughts when the journal arrives. So just be sure that you've got pens, your favorite markers, stickers, washi tape, colored pencils, whatever it is that you like to set up with. And of course your favorite beverage. I've got my trusty water here for all of the talking but you feel free to do whatever sparks joy for you. And just get ready to carve out some me time. So you'll be connecting with each other primarily in the chat this evening. So be sure that you do have your responses set to everyone, our panelists and attendees so that we can all see what you have to share. I love seeing all the incredible ideas you have and different ways we connect with each other. And as many of you have already noticed, cameras are optional for this event. Um, participate at your comfort. Again, we'll primarily be talking in the chat, but I would love to see your costumes if you dressed up. I already see some super great costumes out there. Um, and if you didn't dress up, that's okay too. So we would still love to see you. As you can see, I'm a pineapple tonight. I don't know if that's clear or not, <laughs> um, but my team at work decided to do a group costume where we were all fruit and I decided to be a pineapple. And tomorrow, my husband is dressing up as a Pizza Planet delivery driver from Toy Story um, because I love pineapple pizza. So we're doing sort of a couple-y costume that way. Um, as always, uh, we are doing a gift raffle for our Sonder Socials this month. And by attending tonight, you're all automatically entered. Um, and at the end of the month, Silk and Sonder will choose a winner and send some awesome self-care goodies to you. Um, but I would love to see how you spend your social this evening, especially in costume. I'd love to see selfies with your journals um, and see how you decide to spend your time this evening. So take some photos during or after the event tonight of you setting up this November edition. You can tag us on Instagram at Silk and Sonder with the hashtag Sonder Social or post in the Sonder Club app. So without further ado, I am super ready to kick off our November monthly set up Sonder Social costume edition um, and looking forward to exploring this theme of compassion together. So compassion is the acknowledgement of a struggle combined with taking action to alleviate that struggle in some way. So when you think about practicing compassion, what comes to mind for you? And how are you usually interacting with it? Are you showing compassion to others? Are they showing it to you? What about yourself? We, I think, often tend to kind of focus outward when it comes to compassion and giving our time and attention and care to others and their struggles. That's sort of what comes to mind a lot of the times when we think of compassion or being compassionate. But Sondra fam, you cannot receive something if your hands are already full and you certainly cannot pour from an empty cup. So again, you cannot receive something if your hands are already full and you certainly cannot pour from an empty cup. So let's talk about those full hands first. Have you ever been having an exceptionally tough time and someone tried to offer some advice or help or compassion that just really missed the mark and maybe even made things a little worse? <laughs> um, it's true. Some people are just not talented in the art of empathy and compassion, but oftentimes when people are trying to help, we can appreciate their effort, even if it isn't the right one. But when you're carrying too much, it's hard to appreciate anything unless it's truly helpful. And even then, it can still be really hard to accept compassion from others because 
so often one of the things we're carrying is pride. So what are you carrying with you that you need to set down for a while? Can you give yourself permission to let it go entirely? If not, try giving yourself permission to let it go for a month or a week or even just a few hours a day. Try to plan to spend some time without the burden of shame or guilt to do some compassion and you'll be amazed at what you can perceive from others when your arms are open. Now, going back to that empty cup, have you ever felt like you were always giving and never receiving? I think we've all probably been in a situation or relationship like that before. When that happened, did you ever feel like going on like a kindness strike until some kindness was returned to you? Because I know I have. In those moments, I can only feel how tired and burnt out I feel. And it often makes me kind of resentful of others when the only person that's really burning the candle at both ends is me. So if you've had moments like this too, did you consider showing yourself some compassion? Because I will tell you, I know I didn't. Self-pity is not generally my go-to emotion or state of mind, but often that's exactly what we need. The reality is, if you wish to give compassion to others, then it is vital and necessary that you continually practice compassion with yourself. What things are you struggling with right now? Even if it feels small, what are the things that are weighing on you? And how can you acknowledge and honor those feelings? What can you do to put yourself at the forefront and take action to alleviate some of those struggles this month? Personally, I'm struggling with a lot of guilt and shame and unreasonable expectations of myself these days. This time of year is always really busy for me, but instead of shifting my goals and priorities to accommodate a hectic schedule, I keep making the same demands of myself as if nothing has changed. And it's no wonder that one, I'm not seeing a lot of success in my goals and two, I'm feeling so guilty about it. Last month's theme of patience really allowed me to see how not making adjustments for my busy season impacts my mental, emotional, and physical health. So when contemplating our new theme of compassion, I see the perfect opportunity to correct that. So this month I'm committing to making time for myself and the things that can really help me lighten the load and fill up my cup while keeping compassion front of mind. So as I can practice compassion with myself, I cannot wait to watch how my compassion for others grows. I'll be tracking this by using the compassion log on page 13, but then I'm also using two blank notes pages. One is a gratitude log, something each day that I'm thankful for, and then um, another as a kindness log. So one act of kindness that I witnessed, experienced, or created each day. Um, I think this is something that will help me to practice um, more mindfulness, which typically leads to more compassion for myself, and then hopefully will allow me to have more bandwidth to have compassion with others. And if this is something you're interested in doing too, I'd love for you to join me. I know each of us will have our own way of exploring this theme, and I hope that each one of you will share your own journey this month in Sonder Club. The theme of compassion is really a special opportunity for reflection and realignment, and I know that there's going to be some really, really incredible growth ahead. Um, I appreciate all of you sharing um, what you're going to decide to do this month and allowing me to share with you what my plan is. And tonight is all about connecting, being our real authentic selves, and letting go of the pressure to be perfect. It's also about getting our journals ready to help us receive the gift of compassion all throughout November. So without further ado, let's move on to that agenda. So for this evening, we will be doing a fall celebration activity, reflecting on October, setting up our November intentions, setting up our mood and habit trackers, learning tips and tricks from one another while sharing in the chat, and completing a closing activity around our theme of compassion. So let's get started with our fall celebration activity. Go ahead and flip to a blank page in your journal. And we're going to describe a favorite fall memory. So think about who was there, how old you were, any smells, tastes, or sights that come to mind. How do you feel? My fall memory is absolutely trick-or-treating with my dad. He took me every year, and in the memory I recalled, one of my neighbors is trick-or-treating with us. I was the pink Power Ranger, and he was the black Power Ranger, and we were the coolest kids around. And I was probably about five years old, I think. And I'll tell you, like, 
I can remember the pavement was slightly damp and I can almost sort of still smell that like mix of plastic from the costume and like the damp leaves and the dirt and my pillowcase because that is what I used to collect candy as a kid is so heavy from all of the kind of generous houses that we visited and I have just like this feeling of pure joy and looking back of course the candy and costumes and decorations were all super exciting but of course it's the time with my dad that I really loved and now that he's passed this memory really holds an even more special place in my heart so we're going to take a few minutes to allow you to write out your own memory please share a few things with us in the chat when you're done and I'm going to put on a little spooky music for you while you work
All right, welcome back everyone. Lots of fall festival memories being shared and some special family birthdays and moments. Um, I wanted to share a few specific things I saw in the chat. Um, so from Nancy, um, she shared that my dad and I did Halloween costumes together every year. And one year he even made me into a Maytag washer. So fun to be creative with what we had. I love like out there, like different Halloween costumes. Those are the best. And I love your theme background too, Nancy. Um, Liz shared walking with my friend in North Carolina, seeing all the fall colors I didn't get in Alabama. That is such a beautiful memory, Liz. Yeah, the colors, like not just in like the, the South, but more like the Southeast, especially. I'm in Tennessee and we get some of that, but it's like a whole new ball game once you start to get over into the Carolinas. Um, and then Jennifer shared first trip to the punch pumpkin patch with her eldest. She called them Goggins and so excited. That's so cute. Um, and then Wendy shared, when I was in my early 20s, I moved back with my mom while taking time to evaluate a new direction. We rode our bikes through the small town and appreciated the fall colors in the trees. One of my favorite memories with her. I love it when like everyday moments sort of like stick in your brain. Like fall is just one of those special times. There's always stuff going on. It's sort of the start of the holiday season. Things are changing. But even just like regular moments with friends and family, when those become those important memories, those are really special. So thank you all. Such a fun activity. And I love how this prompt like really invited us to be back in the moment with our five senses. So thank you all for being vulnerable and sharing with us tonight. Moving on to our... October Reflections on page eight. As October comes to a close, we have the lovely ritual starting fresh with our new edition um, by reflecting on what last month may have taught or brought us. And each theme is a chance to engage with a new part of ourselves and be open to the growth this new exploration may bring. So again, I'm gonna ask you to turn to page eight and for the next few minutes, we'll be taking time to reflect on October, writing down our wins, hiccups, favorite moments, hard moments, and what do we want to start, stop, and continue? So for perspective, I tend to think of my wins as monthly bright spots or things that went well, and my hiccups as my monthly missteps or things that maybe didn't go so well. The favorite moments are exactly that, and the hard moments are your least favorite. There may be some overlap in between some of those, and that is totally okay. A reminder, as we begin engaging with our journals, this journal is yours and yours alone. It isn't for anyone else. So write freely, be honest, and interpret things how they speak to you. There is no right or wrong way to do any of this. There is only your way, and that is the only way that matters. I tend to take my journal pretty literally, focusing in on actual events, goals, and stumbles. Um, but with last month's theme of patience, you might like to focus your reflections specifically through that lens or look inward rather than outward. For example, some members use the stop, start, and continue section to focus on mindset, things they want to tell themselves more or stop telling themselves, for example. So do your, your best to authentically reflect on your time last month with or without the patience theme, um, the ups, downs, growth, and hardships that may have brought so that we can start November with an open heart ready for compassion. So once you've filled out this section, please share in the chat what came up for you, what you wrote down, and take time to read what others are sharing. And I will see you in just a few minutes.
All right, so welcome back again. I want to acknowledge a few reflections that folks shared um, from Roberta. Um, they said that they negotiated the salary I wanted for a job offer and got what she asked for, thanks to tips from people on the socials. So that's super awesome way to go, Roberta. Um, and then I saw that Shannon shared for a win their business broke $2,000 for the first time since COVID. That's super, super exciting. Way to go, Shannon. Also, I love those ceiling lights you have going on. Those are super cool. Um, Sheena shared that Hiccup was spending too much time on their phone. Me too, Sheena. Um, and then Charlotte shared that a hard moment was that their cat got sick and they had to spend about $2,000 to get him treated and had to cancel the vacation we were going to take for their birthday in January. I'm so sorry to hear that, Charlotte. I hope your kitty's feeling better. I've been having an issues with one of my kitties and we have been spending quite a bit of money trying to figure out what's going on. So I understand completely. Um, and then Raquel shared that a win was visiting family after three long years and it was a great visit. I'm so glad you got to do that, Raquel. Thank you all so much for sharing. We're now going to segue to our November intentions on page nine of our journal. So starting fresh and thinking about how we want to grow or what our goals for this upcoming month might be, and try to keep in mind our theme of compassion. How might you create some space to really lean into this theme and make it part of your daily consciousness this month? Our intentions are broken down into the following categories, but feel free to change some of them if they don't speak to you. Uh, printed in the journal, we have spiritual health, personal life, physical health, key relationships, money management, and professional goals. And as the top of this page says in your journal, setting intentions is not making a to-do list. It's asking something for yourself and then giving yourself the strength to do it. It's important to let go of the pressure of perfection and use the ideas that work for you. So with this in mind, we did want to share some examples for inspiration on how you might use this page for yourself. Um, you can use the theme of compassion as you set your intentions this month. You can choose to make shifts in certain mindsets or beliefs that may be holding you back. You can choose song lyrics or quotes that represent your intention. You could write down how you want to feel in each one of these sections. You could use stickers or photos in each area, kind of like a vision board. Um, you can write one thing you want to do more of and one thing you want to do less of in each area. And of course, you can just preform, just start writing whatever comes up for you. That's how I did my intention speech for about a year. So the last few months, I had gotten really crafty and used some pictures to set my intentions. And you can see back in August, I used Sailor Moon characters. It was super fun and I really enjoyed it. Um, this month, I've decided to write down something I'm thankful for in each area and then write ways to honor those things as I set my intentions this month. So, for example, I am thankful for my passions. So my personal life intention this month is to make more time for them by including them in my weekly plans. So once you're done setting up your intentions, please share in the chat what came up for you, what your goals are, how you decided to tackle this. And again, I'll see you in just a few minutes.
All right, so hello again. I always love seeing what you guys share in the chat and I love seeing some of you jam out to the music tonight. The playlist is really fun. Um, like most of us, I have a set of intentions every month and I don't always meet them. But the point of intentions isn't to conquer each box. It's to set the idea of what you think you want over the next 30 days and notice how those desires evolve. Flexibility is everything, and it's part of what makes intention so beautiful. So I hope you embrace the opportunity to show yourself some compassion as you engage with your intentions this month. Um, so on that note, I saw in the chat, Tammy had sort of a question that I think would be good to talk about a little bit more as a group, because I think this is a question that a lot of people have about this section. Um, so Tammy said, to avoid having this exercise feel like a to-do list, how would you suggest framing our items in each area? ways to word things so that they feel like intentions rather than to do's and not something we fear we won't attain. And I think this is a really great point and topic to bring up. And Maya made a really great suggestion in the chat to use song lyrics or quotes. That way it's something that sort of speaks to what you're going for without being like, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. Um, for me, the vision board idea really helped with that using those like images because then it felt really broad and flexible. Um, but overall, I really think that compassion plays into this. You know, you just have to really start with a mindset of forgiveness and try to keep in mind that this is sort of a desire or maybe, I don't know, sort of like a place that a vision almost that you want to see for yourself rather than like a hard and fast goal and to keep in mind that it doesn't have to be accomplished in 30 days right you can set an intention this month that carries over month to month to month it doesn't have to be done in the next 30 days you're just asking yourself to put some focus towards it put some energy thinking about it so that hopefully you can make small changes there um, a few other things I wanted to call out in the chat is lots of you are excited about trying that vision board idea. I had fun with that, so I said go for it, and I would love to see how you decide to set those up in Sonder Club. Um, Andrea shared that they were changing money management to time management and professional goals to homeschool goals, and I love that. This is your journal. Make this work for you. And on that topic, if the intentions are bringing stress and anxiety, 
forget about them, put stickers over them, turn it into a quotes page, rip it out, block it out. If it's not working for you, you don't have to use it. Um, and Jackie also mentioned that they're gonna go for 200 Peloton strength workouts, which is super impressive. I can't even imagine doing 50. So Jackie, you got this. Can't wait to see how it goes. Thank you all for sharing and being vulnerable and being open about your questions. This is really a format for obviously us to present some content, but also for all of you to talk with one another and ask questions like that. So I really appreciate you asking that question, Tammy. And with our intention set, we will now be moving into our trackers for November. So these are some of my favorite pages in the journal. When I was first getting started with Silk and Sonder, this is um, really what kept me going for a little while. And we're going to start with our mood tracker. So go ahead and turn to page 10 of your journal and be sure that you have your pins and stickers and everything still nearby. So utilizing a mood tracker can allow us to understand trends and how we feel. So we can take notice and begin making shifts. And when combined with other trackers and journaling, our mood tracker can also help us notice habits or external forces that may be having a positive or negative impact on our emotional health. And from there, we can make changes to focus on the things that bring more positive days. So we're gonna share our feelings wheel here. This is a great resource on identifying which moods you may want to track. Looking at the feelings wheel, we have six main categories. There is joy, surprise, sadness, anger, fear, and of course, love. And I'll bring this wheel back in a second, but first let's talk about how to set up your tracker traditionally. So you can pick one emotion from each section of that feelings chart. You could focus on one to two areas of the feelings chart to kind of dive in deep into one or two emotion families. Um, or with our theme of compassion this month, you can select emotions that resonate to that theme for you. In fact, the word compassionate can be found in the love section of the feelings wheel. But I think you may find some other emotions in joy and sadness sections that may go along with compassion at times as well. You might consider using a set of more neutral moods as well, rather than like super strong emotions. So for example, using the word bothered instead of frustrated or content instead of joyful, because sometimes it can be helpful to track less intense emotions. Um, that's a tip I picked up from fellow facilitator Katie. And you can fill in your mood tracker a few different ways. You can choose to fill in every emotion that came up that day, which is how I used my tracker in the beginning, or just fill in whatever emotion was the strongest. So here's some examples of how other people have used their tracker. Um, so the one on the left here, you can see obviously this person decided to use different colored stickers for different moods and drew different faces on them. Um, they also decided to add in a mood. So if you need to add in a mood, you do that. Again, this is yours to make your own. Um, the person in the middle decided to use different colored lines, which allowed them to kind of layer them on top of it, each other to sort of track multiple emotions, which is something you could try to do. And then the person on the far right decided to just pick a different color for each emotion. And then they kind of just turn the wheel into a flower. So feel free to do how, whatever you like with yours. The canvas is completely yours to fill. So you can take these tips and run with them or choose to do something completely different. Um, for example, I started using my mood tracker to focus on my anxiety levels. And it's been really beneficial for me to notice what's working, what isn't, and celebrate how far I've come. I typically pick a different color for each anxiety level, but this month I'm using a single pen to make it super easy to track for me. So here's some other ways that you could repurpose or refocus your mood tracker. You could turn it into a gave thanks today tracker. So different ways that you gave thanks or use it as a log of giving thanks. You can use it to track anxiety levels like I have been, or if you struggle with something different like depression, you could use it to track that. Um, on a scale of one to six, you could focus on a certain feeling, so anger or tiredness, energy, sadness, um, or you could choose to write six things of compassion for the month and try to do one of those six things each day. And we will use this feelings wheel as a starting point. And just keep those suggestions in mind, keep sharing in the chat. And um, once you set up your mood tracker, let us know what you've put down or what you decided to do with it. And I'll see you again in just a few minutes.
All right. Thank you for taking the time to complete your mood tracker. I love seeing our wheel light up here with the moods that you're tracking. And I also enjoyed seeing a couple of people deciding to repurpose this. Um, for example, I know um, somebody said that they were going to transform it into a more of a spiritual tracker. I think that's awesome. Um, I also saw that Cindy shared that they're going to try to use this as sort of like a correlation tool with the sleep tracker um, to see if the moods kind of are impacted by sleep. I know for me, sleep is a huge anxiety trigger, and I only figured that out by using my mood tracker as an anxiety tracker, so would definitely be interested to see how that goes for you, Cindy. So thank you for taking the time to do that. And we're going to move on to our habit tracker now, which thankfully is on the very next page. So the habit tracker in, can help us start new habits stop doing habits that don't serve us, and continue habits that bring value. So here are a few tips and tricks to consider for your habit tracker. You can use the theme of compassion to ground you in making selections this month. Don't forget, self-compassion is the most important part. You can pick a theme for your habits, like self-care love, um, but like better sleep. I've used, I've seen people decide to just focus on sleep and everything that helps them to get better sleep. You can decide to focus on giving thanks, your eating habits, whatever speaks to you. Um, if you tracked habits last month, then you can choose to continue those same ones into this month. And you can also find inspiration from your intentions that we set up earlier. Remember, you do not have to fill up every line of the wheel. You can just pick a few and leave the rest. Try to find a balance between habits that you know you can achieve and ones that are going to be a little bit more tricky to commit to. So here are a few ways that people set up their habit tracker. And I always like to call special attention to the one on the far right, where there are several days with the word migraine written. And um, sometimes things that we cannot control barrel in to disrupt our lives. And it's hard enough without you feeling guilty about your habits. So when these things happen, I encourage you to log them in the habit tracker. And when you get going again, congratulate yourself because getting back in a rhythm is just as much of a win as starting one in the first place. And acknowledging these hiccups and hardships is absolutely part of practicing self-compassion. Remember, acknowledgement is literally in the definition. So I usually like to draw a little random pattern on my habit tracker and then kind of use a color for each section to color in when I complete it, um, which you can see in the corner. But again, I'm simplifying this month by sticking with a single pen and little symbols to help me track quickly and easily during this busy time. I always make one of my lines a weekly goal so that when I set a weekly habit, I can tie it into the monthly wheel. And this month, I also have a line that says weekly rest. Um, I've been using the mind body health plan and the weekly section of the planner to focus on a different type of rest each day. And when I have done it successfully, it's been awesome. So I'm ready to start making that a regular habit in my wheel now as well. And doing this also allows me to have some flexibility in my habits and goals as I move through the month, which is helpful for me. I also have a share the love habit I'm using this month. So each day I wanna share a compliment, an affirmation, a motivation, either with myself or others to try to honor compassion. So for inspiration, here are some different habit tracker ideas. Share in the chat what you're tracking and I'll put on some music so you can get your wheel started.
Thanks for completing your habit tracker. I saw that most of you noticed that we had hearts popping up on the idea board um, as you started deciding to use some of those for your journal this month. Maya was making that magic happen for us behind the scenes. Um, I popped back over to my page here because I saw a couple people asking about it. Um, so here it is <laughs> if you needed to see it again. Um, it was super great seeing everyone's reflections, intentions, and tracker set up for November. Uh, I hope to see some updates from you in Sonder Club later this month as we explore the theme of compassion further. So in honor of our theme of compassion, uh, we're actually going to do a activity. And we're going to do that by turning to page 24 in our journal to see what tricks and treats we can find. So on this page is a quote, and we're going to review the quote together. It says, that is what compassion does. It challenges our assumptions, our sense of self-limitation, worthlessness, of not having a place in the world. As we develop compassion, our hearts open. So read through the quote. What tricks can you find for leaning into compassion this month? And what treats do you see for yourself when you can practice compassion? When you have an answer for each, look again. Does the quote have more to offer? For example, think of a trick as a tip. One trick that I found in this quote is that compassion is an aggressive verb. It does, it challenges, which means that when I'm practicing compassion, it may often feel like a challenge. And if it does, that's normal. It's a part of what compassion is. Think of a treat as something compassion can grow in our lives. So a treat that I found is that as we develop compassion, our hearts open. So what does that mean for me? An open heart means more joy and less stress. So practicing compassion will give me the treats of joy and relaxation. Share what you find in the chat. There are no right or wrong answers. If you get stuck, just write out what this quote means to you. And I will put on a few more songs here for us.
Thanks, everyone. I'd love to see your tricks and treats from this quote in Sonder Cobb. There are some really beautiful things that you all have shared. Um, when I first decided to do this activity, I'm honestly, I wasn't sure how it would land. And as usual, you all have just blown me away with your responses and proven that when I open up to you all and we offer this content, you guys are doing an amazing job at interacting with it. So to share a few things that people shared in the chat, um, Ashley shared a, a trick as allowing compassion to have a voice over self-limitation. And a treat is they'll have more room to grow when they're not holding themselves back. That is so true and so important. Um, Roberta shared that compassion is realizing that you don't know what happened to a person before they're in front of you and realizing that they may have had a hard time and to treat people with kindness. And I would say that is also true, but also trying to use that for self-compassion as well. Thinking about, did I have a hard day yesterday? Is there something that happened to me earlier that is causing me to be short or have trouble? Um, Karen said that compassion is being present where you are and who you're with. Jen shared that it's like compassion peels back the lies we're prone to tell ourselves about our own value and a treat is discovering the real me. That is a quotable quote, Jen. That's that's amazing. Um, Sophia shared self-compassion tricks are when I make mistakes, reminding myself that it's part of life and I survived. Love that for self-compassion. And Amanda shared a treat for them is reminding them that when they feel self-conscious, worthless, or out of place to affirm their worth, to affirm where they feel they belong, not just to think it to themselves, but to take active steps to counter the negative voice in their head, which is 100% accurate and sounds really like an action plan, Amanda. That sounds like a really good like mantra to lean into. So thank you all so much for joining us tonight. I hope you had a fun and meaningful experience getting to spend some dedicated time on you and the setup. I would love to see a picture of you in your costume with your journal and Sonder Club, uh, pictures of your family's costumes, your pet costumes, all of it in Sonder Club. If you haven't downloaded the app yet, you can do so right now um, by pulling up your camera and using the QR code, or of course you can find it in the Play Store as well. And can you all do me a favor, please? Within the next 40, 24 hours, you're going to receive a survey in your inbox about your experience tonight. Um, please fill it out. You can even hold up your phone to start the survey right now. This is our very first time doing like a themed event, and we need to know if you loved it or if you didn't, what you liked about it, what you didn't like about it, so we can keep the good times rolling. As always, we are so inspired by your ideas and we want to continue to provide a meaningful experience to this community as often as possible. So again, thank you all for joining me this evening. I had so much fun and I'm feeling really energized and so ready to welcome in November and get to embrace compassion together alongside all of you. And I hope you feel the same way. Until then, I'll see you next time. Thank you.